In this video, we'll discuss the Newton interpolation formula. We'll start with the basic idea and introduce divided differences. Then the so-called recurrence relation, which makes the calculation much easier. This leads us to the divided difference table, something that's scribbled down on exam papers all over the world. Finally, we'll go through an example so you can really understand how to use this method. Polynomial interpolation is the process of finding a polynomial which passes through a set of coordinates we call nodes. Often, y will be some function of x and we want to find a polynomial which approximates that function. The Newton interpolation polynomial, which interpolates a set of coordinates, is of the form a sub 0 plus a sub 1 times x minus x sub 0 and so on with the nth term being a constant a sub n multiplied by the product from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of x minus x sub i. I'll explain soon why we have these x minus x sub i terms. The coefficients a sub 0 to a sub n come in the form of divided differences which are usually denoted as f with square brackets containing a sequence of nodes. There are two basic facts which we need to mention before jumping into the formula. The first is that the number of nodes determines the order of the polynomial. For one node we have a zeroth order polynomial p sub zero or a constant function. For two nodes we'll get a first order polynomial p sub one or a straight line. And for three nodes we'll get a quadratic. In general for n plus one nodes we'll get an nth degree polynomial. The second rule, which is crucial for calculating the coefficients of the Newton interpolation formula, is that by definition, the interpolating polynomial must agree with the y values at the nodes. That is, p of x sub i must equal y sub i for every node x sub i. Okay, let's use these ideas to calculate the Newton polynomial for a single node. We know this is the constant function p sub 0 of x equals a sub 0. But given that p sub 0 of x sub 0 must equal y sub 0, we find that a sub 0 must equal y sub 0, and so p sub 0 of x equals y sub 0. For two nodes, we have p sub 1 of x equals a sub 0 plus a sub 1 times x minus x sub 0. Here's where the x minus x sub 0 in brackets comes in. Because substituting x sub 0 into the equation leaves us with only a sub 0, and because p of x sub 0 must equal y sub 0, we find that a sub 0 is still y sub 0 like we had with only one node. This is a general and useful feature of Newton interpolation that if you add another node, you can still use the coefficients you already calculated previously. Also notice as we go along that the products x minus x sub i in the brackets will be equal to zero for the first n minus one nodes. But to continue this calculation, we have our polynomial and if we plug in x sub one and recognize that p sub one of x sub one equals y sub one, we can rearrange and solve for a sub one. This gives us a sub one equals y sub one minus y sub zero over x sub one minus x sub zero. This is what we call a first order divided difference of x sub zero and x sub one. It's the difference in the y values at the two nodes divided by the difference between the two nodes. Why is this called a first order divided difference? Well, you'll see soon enough that an nth order divided difference will have n minus one order divided differences in the numerator. I want to calculate one more divided difference using the approach we've used so far, if only to motivate using an easier, more general method. So, like before, we add another node leading to a second order polynomial, and we have the coefficient a sub 2 to calculate. We substitute x sub 2 into the polynomial, and this will equal y sub 2. We'll subtract y sub 0 from both sides and divide by x sub 2 minus x sub 0. This gives us y sub 2 minus y sub 0 over x sub 2 minus x sub 0 on one side, which is a first order divided difference of x sub 0 and x sub 2. 
Finally, with some rearrangement, this gives us a sub 2 as the difference between two first order divided differences divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Unfortunately, this isn't the form we want. To be clear, it would work perfectly fine, but the form you'll find given in a textbook is the first order divided difference of x sub 1 x sub 2 minus the first order divided difference of x sub 0 x sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 0. This is the second order divided difference of x sub 0, x sub 1 and x sub 2. This standard form comes from the recurrence relation, which is a general way of calculating divided differences. So we've seen that the first order divided difference of x sub 0 and x sub 1 is y sub 1 minus y sub 0 over x sub 1 minus x sub 0. And I usually think of y sub 0 as kind of like a 0th order divided difference. We then saw that the second order divided difference is a divided difference of first order divided differences. In general, the n plus 1th order divided difference of x sub 0 to x sub n plus 1 is equal to the nth order divided difference of x sub 1 to x sub n plus 1 minus the nth order divided difference of x sub 0 to x sub n over x sub n plus 1 minus x sub 0. This is the recurrence relation. So let's prove this statement. I'll call it the recurrence theorem and we want to show that the n plus 1th order divided difference can be calculated from two nth order divided differences using the recurrence relation. The proof of this theorem is really quite beautiful, but it takes some work, so let's get started. Let's suppose we have nodes x sub 0 to x sub n plus 1, so n plus 2 in total, and let p sub n of x be the nth order Newton polynomial which interpolates x sub 0 to x sub n, and q sub n of x be the nth order Newton polynomial which interpolates x sub 1 to x sub n plus 1. We can define a new function p sub n plus 1 of x equals x minus x sub 0 times q plus x sub n plus 1 minus x times p all over x sub n plus 1 minus x sub 0. p sub n plus 1 of x interpolates all the nodes and is an n plus 1 order polynomial. This equation will lead us directly to the proof of the recurrence relation. But first, let's show that it actually does interpolate all the nodes. Firstly, we plug in x sub 0. We have an x sub 0 minus x sub 0 term, which gives us 0 times q sub n, and an x sub n plus 1 minus x sub 0 over x sub n plus 1 minus x sub 0 here, which calculates to give us p sub n of x sub 0. And since p sub n interpolates x sub 0, then so does p sub n plus 1. We can also plug in x sub n plus 1. Again, we have x sub n plus 1 minus x sub 0 over x sub n plus 1 minus x sub 0, which cancels to give 1 and x sub n plus 1 minus x sub n plus 1 giving 0. We're then left with only q sub n of x sub n plus 1. And since q sub n interpolates x sub n plus 1, then so does p sub n plus 1. The rest of the nodes will take a little bit more work. We'll denote the rest of the nodes as some x sub k, where k is between 0 and n plus 1. Note that both p sub n and q sub n will interpolate all the nodes x sub k. So if q sub n of x sub k and p sub n of x sub k have the same value, this becomes 0. And to make things easier, we'll change this q sub n to a p sub n. Then the whole thing cancels to give p sub n of x sub k, which completes our proof that p sub n plus 1 interpolates x sub 0 to x sub n plus 1. So let's go back to the original theorem. We want to prove that the divided difference of x sub 0 to x sub n plus 1 is equal to the divided difference of x sub 1 to x sub n plus 1 minus the divided difference of x sub 0 to x sub n over x sub n plus 1 minus x sub 0. 
We take our equation for p sub n plus 1 and expand it out in Newton polynomial form. We find that the coefficient of x to the n plus 1 is the divided difference of x sub 0 to x sub n plus 1. For q sub n, the coefficient of x to the n is the divided difference of x sub 1 to x sub n plus 1. Remember that qn interpolates x sub 1 to x sub n plus 1 and the coefficient of x sub n in p sub n is the divided difference of x sub 0 to x sub n. We can then go back and write p sub n plus 1, q sub n and p sub n out in full and ignore everything except the x to the n plus 1 terms. Since both sides have to agree on the coefficients of x to the power n plus 1, we get the following equation. Then dividing both sides by x to the power n plus 1 gives us the recurrence relation as required. We use the recurrence relation to construct the divided difference table. The divided difference table will give us an easy way of calculating divided differences using the recurrence relation. We start by noting down the x and y values in two columns. For now, I'm writing general values, but I'll give a concrete example once we've seen the method. From here, the first divided differences go in the third column between the y values. That way, using the recurrence relation, the divided difference comes from subtracting the value immediately above to the left, y sub 0, from the value immediately below and to the left, y sub 1, and then dividing by the x sub 1 minus x sub 0. We then do the same for the other first order divided differences of x sub 1 and x sub 2 and x sub 2 and x sub 3. Now the second order divided differences which go in the fourth column come from the same procedure applied to the third column. Again left below minus left above over the difference between the x's at the far left. If you forget which x values to use you can either draw a line back to the y values and use the x's next to them or a good rule of thumb is to subtract the lowest x value you can see in the numerator from the largest one. Once we've reached the nth order divided difference, the maximum you can get from n plus 1 nodes, then all the divided differences we need can just be read off the top diagonal of the divided difference table. Let's go through an example. We'll use the Newton interpolation formula to find the third order polynomial which interpolates sine of x at x equals 0, pi over 4, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 4. So to start the divided difference table, we write down the x and y values for the nodes. We can then calculate the first order divided differences, remember left below minus left above. We can then calculate the second order divided differences, being careful with which x values go into the denominators. And finally, the third order divided difference. And then once we've calculated these divided differences, we can just plug them back into the original equation. This gives us our final Newton polynomial interpolating sine of x. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.